Thank you for the introduction and also invitation. Uh, I'm happy to be here. And truly, there's nice weather and nice food. Okay, let's start. Okay, uh, my plan of talk, I, I want to introduce you Lagunovich phenomenology, which is some variational principle to and some variants of flow homology, and actually it has many interesting application to this dynamic system. So I want to introduce you what that is. Uh, the plan of my talk is that consists of the following part. I want to introduce you some Rabinovich action functional and relation with some deep dynamics. And then I want to introduce also some construction of Labunovich uh, flow homology. And then for the third part, I want to some give you some computation result. Lavinovich homology, especially this this vanishing and non-vanishing result. And then later, I want to introduce you some yeah, leap wise. intersection point uh, and their existence and cross length. And then for the last part, oh, I want to say about some twisted Cotangent bundle and the simplex deformation in flow homology and Lavinovich flow homology. Maybe I will cover this part. Day and I will discuss this tomorrow. Yeah, let's start. So let me recall the Hamiltonian flow homology first. So if I have some, let's say, yeah, this W, some, let's say, exact simplex manifold. So don't need to be yeah exact, but yeah. So let me consider that one, and then consider. Let's see. For example, I always consider this T star M with some standard symplectic structure, and then I would consider some time-dependent Hamiltonian function. Then this induces some Hamiltonian vector field, and then also induces yeah, that kind of things. Okay, and then in this setup, people usually consider the following the action functional defined on a roof space of this our simplex manifold, and if I have V here, then usually we have some the capping and the simplex area, but if since our simplex manifold is exact, so we have that term H V T 
dt. So in that action functional, we have the following critical point. Yeah, if I have some critical point v, then it's nothing but yeah, we have that one. And then the point is that as a critical point, we have this this one periodic orbit. And this arbitrary energy level. I mean, the arbitrary this H. So, yeah, but in slightly different setup, uh, for the same exact simplex manifold, I want to consider this F. This autonomous Hamiltonian. And then I want to consider the sigma, the regular level set of these things. And then I also consider this alpha, the one form on that uh, regular hypersurface. So if I consider this lambda restrict to uh, this one form restrict to this sigma, then I have that one. And then we assume that This, this is contact form. Uh, it, yeah, this was many times in, in this conference. And then we also assume further that this, uh, and with this alpha, we have the refactor field R alpha. which is defined by this D alpha, R alpha equals zero, and this alpha, R alpha equals one. And then we also further that <coughs> this, if I consider this Hamilton vector field of this F, and if I restrict to this sigma, and this cross coincides with this defective field. Yeah, it always the, the same direction. Actually, for general this F, this Hamilton vector field is just the scaling of the defective field. So we often uh, adjust this our F such that this this scaling uh, appropriate scaling. So we have that condition. And then we again consider some action functional, some different action functional, and the loop space of W to R, but we consider another some extra factor here. And if I consider this V and eta, and sending to this V pull back this lambda, Minus and with F three T three T and then for this eta we put here consider. Indeed this section functional is first considered by the four Labinovich and then that is why people call this section functional is Labinovich action functional. And then if I consider that thing Then the critical point of this AF satisfying the following. So if I differentiate with this this loop direction, then we 
have similar expression with this eta here. This eta comes from there. And then we, if we differentiate eta direction, then we have this term should be 0. Yes. And then this is also equivalent to the following. So with this assumption, so this assumption gives us that this Vt is contained in all zero. So it means that it lies in the sigma. And so by this condition, this is nothing but just eta times R Vt. So this means that, so in the Hamiltonian polymer's case, we have one periodic orbit with arbitrary energy level. Uh, instead of such a condition, if we find the Lagrange action, action functional case, we have this eta periodic leap orbit with fixed energy level. So, and then, yeah. that is our main content of this talk. So, the definition of this Rabinovich flow homology of the sigma in W is the, the flow homology of this A F. So, I need to so I'll verify that this notion is well defined. So, yeah. So, we need to consider the critical point of the chain complex of this, this AF. But uh, you can directly see that if you have some one critical point, then the critical point is comes with some parameter. It's non dynamic case. So we need to consider the additional stuff in that consider this let's say H additional function on this critical of this AF R, this Morse function. And then this is nothing but the span of this critical point of this H with G2 coefficient. And then I want to define some flow boundary map. Indeed, this is also H. And then if I have some, let's say, X minus, then I want to summation of this or X plus of the critical point of H. And then this moduli space of this X minus X plus with some, let's say, also J in bar, and then also some additional the metric on that critical manifold is also in bar. And then I want to, for the zero dimensional case, we count that, and then we have such a thing. Yeah. So, For the well definedness of delta and 
in order to show this this boundary square is zero, we need compactness argument for the modulus is So there are many issues involved here, but I want to concentrate on new phenomena which arise especially in this Rabinov polymerase case. Yeah. There are many some analytical deep <coughs> theorem or preparation is involved, but I want to concentrate on the new phenomena in this context. So the theorem by is Schilliba and from and further that uh, this WN is the uh, is the the sequence of the gradient flow lines of this AA, AF with asymptotic condition is a W cross minus the here. Then in order to compactify that modulus space, we need some, there exists some uh, reparameterization and, and exists sub sequence of uh, which shift this, this sigma n, sequence of that one, uh, converges in this, this C infinite log sense, that this R to yeah. infinite so locally converges in this setup. So when you consider this, let's say, most uh, both trajectory, then yeah, this this compactification holds for in a certain sense. So we want to somehow uh, show the <coughs> corresponding result in this setup. So actually, this is nothing but this C infinite log in this R plus S1 to this W and this C infinite log to this R. Then uh, there is a sketch of proof. Yeah, there are three small ingredients. So we need to show that this C0 Uniform bound for this this loop direction and also the C zero and C zero uniform bound for the derivative V N and then the third thing is that the C zero Uniform bound for this 
new thing. This eta n, the Lagrangian multiplier. Yeah. So we need to overcome this three stuff. Yes. Ah. Oh. So. Okay. But yeah, I, I erased it, but you directly computed that if you choose your almost complex structure J appropriately, then this the gradient it looks like has two components. One is J, let's say VP of V minus X F VP. And the other is that That one. And so this gradient flow line is nothing but the following thing. So this, let's say, so the gradient flow line for this AF is that, so boundary S, this SP plus J V S P V minus X F V equals zero. And also there is also another equation from this Lagrangian multiplier. Uh, this So yeah. So if I choose my J cylindrical infinity, then actually we can assume that this convected infinity property and plus this maximal principle gives you that this this one. That if you, that if the the asymptotic is somehow fixed, and then if you go to this touch this uh, infinite region, then you somehow break this maximum principle. So you only have to stay in the compact region. And then also, if two is not hold, and then the derivative somehow blow, then we have some bubbling of argument that implies that there exists non-trivial holomorphic sphere exists, but this is not happen because we are in this exact simplex manifold. So for the this the three part, uh, uh, this is uh, somehow really issue. So I want to show this three in a somehow third and several in a, into several steps. So I need some fine, <coughs> some preparation. Do we have any questions so far? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So as in the above setting, uh, there is, 
epsilon and c such that if a gradient of a f is smaller than epsilon, then this Lagrangian multiplier is bounded by some c. Yes, this thing. So if the this the gradient is very small, then we can somehow have some control in terms of this action value. So in this, in order to show the L infinite or C infinite or L infinite bound of this lambda, uh, eta, so we want to somehow divide into two parts. The, the gradient is very small part, and then the middle part. So we want to uh, divide our argument into two parts. So first, I want to prove the fundamental lemma, step one, is that, yeah, it is somewhat technical. So step one is that if if our loop is contained in this small neighborhood of our, of our this sigma, is then this eta is bounded by two times of yeah for sufficiently small delta uh, we have such thing so yeah let me start with this gradient value of. By the definition, it is nothing but this 0, 1, this V pullback lambda minus 1 F VT DT. Yeah, I did nothing. And then also, I want to lambda VT. And then minus with the x f. Ah. Uh, and ah uh, eta. Plus eta. So in this second line, I just add this term and subtract this term. Yeah, I did nothing so far. So, and yeah, in this case, I did a trick on that thing. I first consider that term. Then minus
just want to switch some direction. And then, so in this setup, uh, I can assume that this is bigger than this plus delta. Because uh, since our, the Hamiltonian vector field is converted to leaf vector field, so it become one as uh, this loop close to this sigma. So we can assume that that condition, if delta is too, so sufficiently small. And then for this part, ah, uh, not for this part. For this part, I can assume that this is less than of the gradient of this A F, sorry, lambda. Yeah, since this is just part of this one component of that part. And then this part is less than this lambda respect to, to this U delta. And then also this part, yes. Oh, I missed this eta term here. Big mistake. This eta term there. And this term is less than this delta by the definition of our, our, our assumption. Yeah. So far, yeah, this delta and delta term from our cancer. So this is this. Ah, if I consider this term and third term, it gives me that term and plus minus, and then if I define this term as one half of the C delta, the C delta I, I mentioned, then it is C delta of the gradient of A F is three eta. Yeah, then we have that inequality by moving this term into that term, then this eta is bounded by sum of this term and this term multiplied by eta. And then for step two, I will leave you as an exercise for this step two. Uh, for this for given delta, there exists some epsilon such that this our the gradient is smaller than epsilon, then is our V is contained in this U delta. This is quite straightforward. And then for this step one, we crucially use that our, uh, the surface is uh, restricted contact type. If there is no such a condition, then we cannot have this, this, this bound of that one. So for this situation, we crucially use that the, we have some one form coming from the restriction. So then for this step one plus step two plus let's say this C, for this C, if I consider this max, 
of 2 and this C delta epsilon. I mean that this term, the third and uh, the, the last term is the C delta times the epsilon because our this assumption is that this gradient is smaller than epsilon. Then this gives this fundamental lambda. Now, yeah, we are ready to prove of the three. This the uniform bound of this eta. Okay. Mm. Yeah. We consider. So let's say the tau, we first define tau as follows. The infimum of, let's say, k such that the gradient of Yeah, we, as I already mentioned, that this we want to consider this argument into two parts. One is come from this the gradient very small and the large. So we first pick some time that the, the gradient is become this epsilon, smaller than epsilon. So in this case, we have a f. This action difference gives us the energy of this gradient flow. And nothing but a gradient of this F, Ds. And then this is bigger than this S, S plus tau S. Yeah, during this time, yeah, we have this term is bigger than this R, this square. Square. So this is this tau s times this epsilon square, and then this gives us that if I consider this is a b and this is a a. And this gives me this tau s is bounded by this epsilon square and b minus a. And then the right hand side does not depend on a choice of this s, so we have some uniform bound here. So yeah. And then finally, I consider this eta s, then this eta 
x plus tau x plus minus this s x plus tau s eta prime t dt then this is nothing but s plus tau s and plus tau s then this term is bounded by eta prime is this bounded by equals that term so we have this f is infinite now here and then for this part we have the bound upside here c of this a s and plus the tau s is bounded by that term epsilon square and b minus a and this f is infinite sum. So and also this is bounded by this max of this a and b. Yeah so this eta, uh, the, this last term, there is no, does not relate to any the, this, the, the gradient flow parameter, only on the general fact, uh, constant from the simplex manifold. So we have some uniform bound here. Yeah, that is the basic, yeah, the small way to consider uniform bound. Yeah. And then, yes. And then with the standard the flow theory. argument, we have the theorem by the Chiliba and Fraunfelder that this, the Rabinovich flow homology of the sigma W is flow homology of this AF is well defined. And the, uh, the sigma is restricted contact time. Okay. And then it's also invariant under a homotopy. of the restricted contact time. Yeah, for the remaining minute, I want to show you some computation. Uh, first, I want to give you some vanishing result. It's also theorem by the Chiliba and Fraunfelder that if the sigma inside of this exact simplex manifold is
Hamiltonian displaceable. Then this Lavinovich homology of this sigma finish. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the proof is the following. So we now consider the phi. Displacing Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian scale. And then I want to choose some phi h. I mean that i.e. this phi of the sigma. And then also we assume that this F is the defining Hamiltonian for the sigma case. Okay. And then you assume the following, consider the following thing. Ft is nothing but uh, chi t of this F is time dependent, weakly time dependent Hamiltonian such that this is a fixed Hamiltonian and with some time, some cutoff function, uh, satisfying the following thing. I mean that this chi t equals zero, this t is in time one half to one. And then the integral is one. And then also for this uh, time dependent Hamiltonian H, and we, we also may choose that this our HT is generating this our displacing Hamiltonian, and also this H T is zero for T is in zero to one half. So we have some uh, two region and one region we all only have this support of this F and the other region we have only support of this H. So and then we now consider the following Hamiltonian, ah, action functional. A, F, T, and H, T. The loop space of W times R to R. Uh, if I pick things, then so you pull back lambda minus eta this F. Then one can 
directly check that the critical point of this new action functional satisfying the following thing. And then if I differentiate with this eta direction, then also I have 0, 1, f, vt equals 0. Yes. And then this means that we have uh, for this vt is contained in this sigma, this m3 inverse 0, for t is in 0 to 1 half. So for the time from 0 to 1 half, we follow the Hamiltonian vector field of this f. And then from time to 1 half to 1, so in this case, we, have, we follow the Hamiltonian vector field of this h. And then the fact is that the flow homology of this A, F, T, and H, T is where defined. And also the Lagunovich flow homology of this A, F, is isomorphic to this flow homology of this A F T and H T. Yeah, this is coming from the following thing. And yeah, this is, uh, if I consider this, let's say, this F beta S is the homotopy between this F and Ft, and let's say Hb beta S, the homotopy between this 0 and Ht, then the usual continuation map argument of the flow homology gives you this isomorphism between these two things. Yeah, actually this H is somehow compactly supported. Uh, no, yeah, we can choose that it's compactly supported. So it is, yeah, not much harm in the continuation argument. And then, yeah, if I consider that thing, yeah, let me draw some picture. So there is a sigma here. And then, so this phi displacing, displacing this sigma, this is this joint. So if I start with some any point here, and then flow by this, this x f. And then one should go to the other sheet. And then there is no chance to came back from the first sheet. So this means that the chain complex of this, the second thing, the new thing, is zero vector space. There is no generator. So this obvious geometric or dynamic observation gives you that this flow homology of this AFT and HT is zero. So this gives you some vanishing result of this Rabinovich flow homology. And last three minutes, I want to give you some non-vanishing result.
Any questions so far? Then the domination results first come from this uh, chili bug and from Felder and this is Bowen Chan. This Rabinovich flow homology of this the disk bundle is the loop space, free loop space homology and degree shift yeah then for time limitation I want to only give you some some remark uh, this come from the following long exit sequence. Of uh, symplectic homology of this W. Uh, here's W here. And there is also some computation results for simple homology. Yeah, this is done by many people. Uh, for example, this Abundant Ah, first Vito book. I should. Vitobo, Abondandolo, Barch, and the Salamon and Vevo. Yeah, so if you combine these two stuff, so this term is somehow, is com uh, the generator comes from that part, gives you that, that thing, and then from that part, gives you that thing. Yes. Yeah, there is some remark for this computation results. Then I want to interpret this number engine results tomorrow by some dynamical uh, object in our quaternion bundle setup. Yes. Yeah. Let me stop here.